Hi there, and welcome to the Love or Leave the Law podcast with your hosts, Adam Ouellette and Casey Berman. Hi, everyone. Casey Berman and Adam Ouellette, Love or Leave the Law podcast. So happy to have you back. Uh, We love having you as part of the community. We love having you as listeners. And today we're going to talk about part six of the seven keys uh, about how to fall back in love with the law. As you know, we focused on how to leave the law if you're really unhappy and want to go to a non-law alternative job. Uh, We focus also on the flip side about if you don't want to leave the law, but you're just not in alignment with your law practice, how to refresh, how to reconnect with practicing the law, if that's really what you should be doing, if that's really what you want to do in the world and to provide value. Well, let me jump in real quick because some people have never ever ever connected with their law practice and they don't need need a refresh. They just need to be fresh with it. So wherever you are, that's why we're here. And, that's right. Um, that's right. And, and it's about either leaving it, moving on, or it's about really realigning with or aligning for the first time with why you went to law school and became a lawyer in, in the first place. So key part seven, part six of the seven keys right now is we're going to talk about balance. Now, hold on. Work-life balance. We've heard about it. Yeah. Cliched. It, it's the, the, you know, the, the, uh, uh, the, the town of gold, the, the, how, how do the pot at the end of the rainbow, like really Casey Adam, really like real work life balance. How do you attain that? And what we want to do is start a discussion today about some, some strategies as well as some tactics about how you can look at this differently. This ties into previous episodes around meditation, uh, previous episodes around technology and automating your practice that I'm going to throw it out to you because people are going to be asking this. What do we mean here and how do we get to this idea of a, of a work-life balance with a law firm that, that we love, that we're, that's fresh, that we're in alignment with? What does this mean? Well, you and I just chatted about a few things that we're going to talk about on this episode, but something has just come into my, my attention that yeah. I think is most important and we're going to talk about it right now. Um, part of the reason people don't like the law is that they're working for someone else. And you, when you work for someone else and you're not your own boss, um, and, and there's flip sides to this too, and I'll go through that in a second. But when you, you're working for someone else and you're not your own boss, someone's literally telling you when you have to be at work, what you've got to do, how much you've got to get done. And, and all of that is dictated by the higher ups, right? Yeah. A lot of people don't like it because they want the autonomy and freedom uh, that could come from a non-law career jobs, a non-law business that they own, or their own law firm. And so one of the things that I've talked about in other videos and and teach is uh, make sure you know enough about the law as a lawyer before you leave and open up your own firm. I mean, I think part of the problem we have today in, in terms of law students getting out of law school and um, hanging a shingle, uh, they don't, and we, we, we just don't know enough uh, to really be able to service and, and be the best lawyer for our clients that we could be. And so um, Casey and I have talked about this and the life balance stuff, when I think about it in my own world, um, I worked for someone uh, that we became partners really rapidly because one of the things I focused on was learning how to be a business person, be yeah. a businessman. I'm a man, so I'm a businessman. And that really turned the, the key for me in terms of, man, I was bringing in business. I was making, I was making more money and I'd cut a deal with him to give me, you know, a percentage of whatever I brought in because I was doing all of it and all of But I can tell you when you have a boss, sometimes it's not all that fun. And Casey, you've had bosses in the past and you understand exactly what I'm talking about in terms of life balance. And so you have heard, you heard the call of be an entrepreneur, be a business person, businessman. And that's one of the reasons why you listen to that calling, leave law behind, because you had a law jobs that you didn't like. You've had other jobs that some of them you liked, some of them you didn't. But you have a pathway where you literally took this path out of the law and out of other jobs so that yeah. you could become your own boss. So tell us a little bit about that, because with when you, when you say I say life balance. I don't say work-life balance because it's just about your life. Working, yeah, that's a good point. 
a career is, is part of your life. It shouldn't be all of your life. But yeah. why don't you tell us a little bit about your path and why you and I are going to do a whole course on how to be an entrepreneur, how, be your own boss course. That's what we're, ta- we're calling it at this point. So. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, I went to law school, uh, graduated in 99, uh, went in-house with a technology company, uh, left the law in 04 because I was just not feeling um, really engaged. Uh, there were things that I wanted to do that just weren't uh, really uh, accepted at, at the job. So I left in 04 and I've done a number of things. I've started uh, a few companies. Some have worked out, some have not. I've done a lot of consulting. I've taken other jobs on uh, and gone back as an employee with, with some I liked and, and <clears throat> others that I haven't. Leave Law Behind, I launched in 2009 as really just a, a passion project. I just started writing. I just started writing a blog. And, and uh, it's grown into, into a real live business. And I've had a few points, and even at a point now where you look at this difference of, of a mindset where you're working for someone else or you're working for yourself. And I think when it comes to you know, where I am and when it comes to a balance in life, you know, for me, uh, the most important thing is to really look at, at my feelings. And I don't mean this in a, in a romantic comedy, tearjerker, uh, <laughs> touchy-feely, California, let's all get along type way. I really mean that, you know, our feelings, whether it's a pit in the stomach or whether it's an emotion that we have, are canaries in the coal mine. They mm-hmm. are indicators. They, are, they tell us a huge, uh, there a huge amount of information about what we should or shouldn't do, and in our life, and what we're taught in, in particularly in America by the media, is to ignore your feelings, just buck it up and get through. No pain, no gain, and all of that. And there's definitely about acting, uh, but you know, I have come with working with you, Adam, listening to people like Abraham Hicks or Wayne Dyer, or even a Tony Robbins or an Oprah or a lot of other motivational. Um, uh, 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 talkers and uh, speakers. And what really gets me is that when I go into, into my feelings and when I'm not, f- when I'm feeling disconnected, anxiety or pit in the stomach with something at work, it's either something where I can stretch my comfort zone and just kind of push through it. Or it's something where I know that I shouldn't be doing. And I can tell you that when I think about leave law behind, I think about my business, I think about what I want to do. There's some boring things I have to do. I have to set up an automated system. I have to write something I may not want. But there is a, a, a driven purpose that is, that is in everything I do. I mean, look at this podcast here. We are taking our time to do this. I love this. I could, I could do this for hours. Um, I love we do it for hours. We do do it for hours. We've been doing and it for hours so far. We have been. Today. We have been. And so – my, I'll, I'll end, but I, I guess my point when it comes to the, to the, the life balance and, and really an indicator about what you should be doing is to, is to see how you feel, to see how you feel about it. Good point. And leave law behind for me is I feel so great about helping people. Um, and really it comes down to carving out the time. I think the biggest frustration that I have in my life right now is carving out enough time to focus on what my purpose in life is. And so then that then begs the question of what's taking up your time. And then how do you change things? Um, How do you, how do you leave a job that's taken up too much of your time to focus on what you want? How do you reduce your expenses so that you don't have to do a, to pay for the big house or the three cars or whatever it is? How do you reduce that? So you don't have to, make those payments and you can spend time working on, on what your focus is. Yeah. So, um, I mean, that's a biggie Casey. It, it, it's yeah. massive. And you and I've talked about this and we've, we've alluded to it on, on these episodes a little bit, but you know, look at the kind of money you spend every month. And I did yeah. this years ago. And when, when I looked at, you know, I was making really good money um, and I was working a lot less, but there's still a lot of liability there and there's still, you got to have your hands and stuff. And it was like, why am I, why am I living in this huge house that we barely use? Yeah. Any of? Why do I have all of these expensive cars in the, the driveway when I just need a car to get me around? And it's not like I had a lack of money. I always had money, but everything comes with a price. It does. Yeah. If you, I, I, we had a, a vacation house uh, and, and, you know, there's things going wrong there. 
you have three cars. There's so, something going wrong with one of them all the time, something in the house. And, and it's like, we got my, my partner and I got to the point where we sat down and I said, look, things need to change because there's no reason why we need to spend this kind of money. It's ridiculous, the overhead. And so, um, we just decided we were going to move to a place more rural. We had horses. It was extremely expensive where we lived with, with the horses. Uh, you know, I traded my Audi, whatever the hell it was, an $80,000 car in for a Subaru, which I absolutely love. I've got yeah. money in the bank. I don't spend a ton of money. I don't have to work that hard. And I wasn't working that hard. But the fact is everything comes with a price. And, and so Casey, you, you really um, opened up kind of Pandora's box when you started talking about that because what I was also doing was taking a look at my firm. What kind of money am I spending in the firm? Is there things that I, we're spending money on that we don't need to? Do we have too many employees? Do we not have enough? All of those things. So take a look at your personal expenses. Your expenses, if you are a partner in a firm, and uh, see what there is there that you don't need to be paying anymore. Yeah. And, and so when you, you talk, go ahead. A lot of financial gurus will say, don't order that cup of coffee at Starbucks, save your $3.25. Yeah, well. You know, over 60 years, you'll have a million dollars, something. I get it. But you know, that cup of coffee is nice. You know, the bigger point here is there is, is from a lifestyle standpoint, like you said, something has to give and you have to make decisions. And so I was talking with someone who contacted me through leave law behind, uh, wants to leave the law, uh, needs a job, needs it to be a high paying job. And we're talking through things. And he says, you know, I need a, a very big salary at whatever job I go to. I said, okay, tell me why. And he said, well, we're used to a certain lifestyle. Uh, I said, okay. I, I've heard well, that a lot in divorce proceedings when yeah. I said some in divorce law, family yeah. law back in the day, which you just want to cringe when you hear that from anybody, but it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I understand. Okay. I understand that. I've, I've been there and done that. I get it. I get it. And I would say, okay, but if you're used to certain, which means I want to, I just want to be able to, to kind of waste money and, yeah. and buy these cars and just blow it on a few hundred dollar dinner and so on. I get it. But what happens is you're not going to have your freedom. You're not going to have it. And so I, Casey, I'm at a point in my life where I'm, I have two children. I live in San Francisco. I'm, I'm at that point in my life where I'm looking at and saying there's certain lifestyle I have and I don't need to overhaul everything and go live in a box somewhere or a cave. Right. But at the same time, What's more important for me is freedom. I want to be more with my kids. I want to be able to not have to have a, a calendar a day full of meetings and phone calls and so on and just be like this, you know, at the end of the day. And so the, the big challenge I have for everyone here is to not cut out the coffees or to go with friends and you can take your vacation, but really to look at, you know, is there a lifestyle change? Should you move somewhere not to a cave in the desert, but should you move somewhere that's, that's less expensive? And maybe not forever, but if you took six months and do it, there's, there's a lot of different levers that you can pull in your life that can keep a good lifestyle, but can also get to a balance, that can get to a level of freedom, that, that can get to a level of a monthly nut that is not nearly as high as it may be now for a personal as well as for your, for your office. Well, one of the reasons I looked at the lifestyle was because I wanted to do something else and I wanted to move into the teaching and, and sharing and writing yeah. and, and becoming an author and all that. And I knew that uh, even working two, three hours a day, I, I wanted to stop doing that. And so what I said uh, to Candace was, I, I, let's make this transition because my life needs to be different. I want it to be different. Yeah. And uh, there's going to be some time there where there's not going to be some income. And so let's cut things back. And, and we did. And it, it was perfect yeah. because it gave me the opportunity to not think about those businesses and they continue to operate. And, uh, but the fact is that I wanted to move into a different area. So if you're looking to leave the law, if you're looking to go into your own law firm and start your own law firm, there is a, a period of time where there is a, there's not a, a lot of income sometimes yeah. and depending on yeah. how you do it, or if you want to get out of the law and start your own business, there is a, a, a period of time where you're going to have to set things up and you can do that while you're working. But a lot of times there's just not a lot of time to uh, put to that. But this was an important point in that take a look at what you've got, take a look at what you spend and, and uh, cut it back if you can, because then it frees you up to, to start working on your business yeah. 
instead of in it so much. And the on the business stuff is where you can shave hours off of your day, not just your week, your day. And so let's yeah. talk a little bit about the idea of systemization, systemizing all of the stuff that you do in your business as a law, as a lawyer. And what does that mean? That means taking a look at everything that you do in a given day and week and month and looking at how you can automate it, looking at how you can make it better, looking at how you can delegate it, looking at how you can outsource it. There's a guy that's coming up uh, after the next episode, one of the next episodes. His name is Greg, and I interviewed him, and he outsources stuff to other lawyers that do it a lot less than he does it, and he outsources a lot of the paralegal stuff that he uh, has that comes into his firm, and they do it a lot faster and in some instances yeah. cheaper, and it gets stuff off his plate. He doesn't have to have as much staff. He doesn't have as big an overhead. So systemization, you know, delegation, all of these things come into play when you are looking for more time to do you know the things you want to do. The exercise I like to do is, all right, so depending on where you live, you know, your monthly nut is three grand, eight grand, 10 grand, 15 grand, 20 grand a month, wherever you are, we all live in different parts of the country or the world. But what if that dropped to $1,000 a month, $2,000 a month? I mean, what if you lived with your family and everything on $2,000 a month? How would that change your life? Now, as opposed to thinking up, I mean, you can also think about, you know, what if you made $50,000 a month? How would that change your life? But if it dropped, and again, I'm being exaggerating, but you don't want to cut out coffees. So you're not living like a hermit here. But what if you were able to move somewhere? What if you were able to automate things? What if you were able to rent your house out and not have that big mortgage and go live somewhere less expensive? You may be rolling your eyes, but, but it can happen, even if it's just for six months. But what if you're able to? And I had did this exercise, and I said, if I can drop my expenses to two grand a month, three grand a month, by the way, everyone, this is what Adam did. We'll get to that later. If I can drop my expenses to two grand a month, three grand a month, I, 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 I mean, I can, I, can make, I can make that in, in a few hours in a month through Leave All Behind, through other consulting. Like, mm -hmm. are you kidding? And so that's where I'm at right now. I, Casey, I live in San Francisco. It's expensive. I am looking at ways where I can reduce my nut by, by 70%. Adam did this as he was talking about, you know, he moved from Florida up to uh, near Asheville in North Carolina and has done that. And it aligned with him. Maybe North Carolina is not the place for you, but there is another place for you out there. And so it can happen. It doesn't need to happen the rest of life. Maybe you move back to your city or move back somewhere, but it's just giving you that space. And it, you know, Adam, we were talking about this before we did the podcast offline about, and, and the big important question I had was what is most important to you in your life? Who is most important to you in your life? Yeah. And we go through phases in our life. You know, when we're a kid, what's most important to us are, Star Wars toys or stuffed animals or, or, or high our bikes, our big wheels, or our bikes, right. Making the baseball team and the twenties and thirties, you know, but I'll tell you that, you know, what's most important to life for me, Casey right now is, is time is freedom. That's right. It's the ability to do what I want and not be, not be pressed by a calendar and so on. And so we all have our own, but I'm assuming a time and a freedom is something that resonates with our audience. So everybody, if that's what your emotions are telling you intellectually, as well as emotionally, listen to it. And then you say, well, what do, how do I act to really align with what it is I want, which is time, freedom, uh, uh, less anxiety over money and so on. And, and that question of what is most important to you in your life, when you really answer that, you know, Adam, you pose that question. And now that, that really struck me. Like that is one of the main questions for us to ask right now. Well, yes. <laughs> what I did was I reverse engineered my life. Yeah. I said, what do I want my lifestyle to be like? Part of it was, where do, you, where do I want to live? Where it's reverse I, engineering. It's absolutely right. That's all yeah. it is. So I said, how much do I want to work? How much do I want to make? What do, what do I want to focus my time on? And then what do I want to do with my time when I'm not working? And so when I looked at that and reverse engineered it, I said, I really only want to maybe work two, three hours a day. Um, and then I wanted to make a certain amount of money. And, and then that all changed as the years went on where, yeah, the money was fine, but I was just tired of the same thing. You know, I, I was telling somebody uh, the other day, uh, 
consultant, um, prospective consultant client. And I said, one of the things I don't want for some of the young attorneys, and this guy was younger, I don't want you to go through the kind of shit that I went through <laughs> because there was nobody teaching this kind of stuff. And there still really isn't. Um, luckily I had some good coaches and, and books that I've read, but nobody teaching lawyers this stuff. And so one of the things I sat down, I was like, what does my life want to look? What do I want my life to look like a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now? And yeah. I reverse engineered it. I didn't want to work 15 hours a day. And I said, how can I make it happen to cut it in half, cut that in half, cut that in half again. And I just kept figuring it out, figuring it out. And we've talked about some of those things now, but it got to the point where people look at me and say, you're working two, three hours a day. Why would you leave that? Well, because there's something on the other side of that that's more important. I would not be here speaking with Casey. I would not even know Casey. I wouldn't be here sharing this stuff with you if I would have sat back and said, hey, man, life is easy at this point. Let's just continue this on. I was doing some training. I was doing some schmoozing and networking and, and building these automated systems, and it was easy. But it didn't really hold my passion. Yeah. And it was fun for a few years. But then after that, I was like, what's on the other side of this? And I found it. And now I'm reverse engineering my life now based on who do I want to help? Who's my ideal client? How much time do I want to spend working every day? And, and flip it on its head to look at it in a new perspective, a new way. And when you do that, you can start to reverse engineer your life in small ways to get you to the point where you're living the ideal life that you truly want for yourself. That's right. That's right. It really is. And it's what's most important. And, you know, I don't think having that new Tesla is the most important thing for people. And I don't think, uh, you know, potentially being the head of the such and such association is the most important thing. It may be. And if that's what it is, then keep doing what yeah, you're doing. No, it's, it's all good if that's what you want to do. But for me, what I've said now in my life is if I want the Tesla, had a lot of nice cars, lots of them. I mean, I can't fit in a lot of the big sports car, you know, the small, smaller sports cars. I always wanted a Porsche. You know, I was 12. I loved cars all the way till I, well, I still have cars, but I had these Porsche pictures on my wall. And then when I was, I was about 17 and I was six, seven, I was like, Oh crap, there's going to be no Corvettes in my future and no Porsches. <laughs> so, but, and that was okay. But um, the, the, the thing for me is, is looking at what you want for your life. And then if you want a Tesla, if you want the Tesla, Casey, there's nothing wrong with wanting the Tesla. There. I would like a Tesla. I could go buy a Tesla right now. But I always said, if I don't have cash to pay for that Tesla, yeah. I'm not doing it. Because yeah. we get ourselves in this hole of debt. Yes. where we buy the big house and it's through a mortgage. We buy the big cars and we have these huge monthly payments. We have the massive office or whatever we've got. A lot of it is debt. And when you get into that debt cycle, which a lot of you are already in because you have student loans, you get in that cycle of debt, more debt, pay off the debt, I get more debt. It, it's like a never ending cycle. And so, yes, I could go buy a Tesla right now. I've got the money to do it, but I'm not gonna do it because I don't need it. And yeah. at some point, maybe I'll buy a Tesla, but I'll make sure that the money's sitting there to go pay for it. So I, I'm out of that debt cycle. Yeah. You know, I, I don't want to be in any debt at all. And I'm not at this point in my life, thank goodness. And I'm not putting myself back there because it's a place where you never seem to get out of. You really right. want life balance. You get yourself out of the debts, pay off your student loans, which I did in 12 years, which was, whew, man was more than my first house payment, my student loans. Right. Um, get rid of your credit card debt. Pay it off. Stop inc increasing that credit card debt and stop looking to compete with the Joneses. It's, okay. a, it's a bunch of bullshit as far as I'm concerned. But in the next episode, we're going to teach you about beliefs because beliefs are everything. And so you yeah. want to make more money. You want to work less. You can do all of that, which I did, and you can – continue on with that, <laughs> which I didn't do, <laughs> but we're going to talk about beliefs. And we're going to talk a little bit about the belief systems that we have, some of the main belief systems that stop us, that self-sabotage self us. But one of the things I want you to really get, if you have not read my book, read it before you watch this episode, because I have a really good pr uh, primer, primer, however you want to say it. I say primer, people call it primer. I don't know what the hell, who cares? on beliefs and how important they are and uh, they are everything. 
They're everything in your world. Everything you have is because of a belief system or you don't have is because of a belief system that you have gotten usually from someone else. And so um, whatever you want, you could do, you could have uh, as long as you shift your beliefs. And I've, uh, it's what I've done. And so I'm excited about that next one because the, the next key will wrap up a lot of the stuff we've been talking about, Casey, and we'll take it and put a big bow on it so that you guys can start to utilize some of this stuff in your life. That's but, right. um, you know, whatever you want, you can do. You just have to shift your belief systems if, you, if that's what you choose. And to end, when it comes to this idea of balance in, in your life, the, the question for me was, what is most important? And that's only for you to answer. And it's also for you to not fool yourself or BS yourself in thinking what's most important for you that that really isn't. Uh, look inward, answer that question courageously about what is most important for you. And if, you, if there's a lifestyle that you need to keep up, if that's really what's most important to you, then there are certain things you need to do to support that and, and you should be good with it. For me, that wasn't most important. And, and where I am in life is creating that space and that freedom for me to ironically make so much money through automated systems, through leave law behind, through helping people. Um, you know, we talk about reducing expenses, but really the idea that I have with reducing expenses is to create that space to then meditate, to get creative and to create new products and ideas to help people leave the law. That's my focus yeah. that can help, that can help thousands of people. And so, um, don't think that just when you're, you're cutting back and sort of retrenching, it's because you're going to live a life of a hermit. It's actually refreshing yourself so that you can grow your business even more. Um, but what's most important to you in life. And then from there, I think you lead to this balance or this purpose that's really in alignment with you. Yeah. I mean, this topic we could spend 20 yeah. episodes on Casey. We really could. Cause we didn't even d- jump into the fact that you're shifting your life because you want to spend more time with your kids. That's what's most important. Your kids and your wife, yeah, really. that's what's most important to you. Clearly, it's important for both of us to help other people. But in the end, it's about that familial unit that you have and the love you have for your children and your wife that really has guided you into yeah. this lifestyle because you know, you're know you homeschooling your kids. And we could spend many, many hours on this topic. And I spend yeah. a lot of time with my consulting clients on this very fact, just yeah. how do I set my life up so that I can reverse engineer it? And so right. how can you reverse engineer your life so that you're living a balanced life, but more so living your ideal life. That's right. And so check back with us on this next episode. Do not miss this next episode. Whatever you do, it is one of the most empowerful, most powerful topics that I've ever run across as a teacher and as a human. And Casey can uh, say the same because it, you know, his beliefs are changing and his life is changing because of that. So make sure you're with us in the next episode. It will be the last of the keys. And then we're, we've interviewed some people that are really amazing people. And, um, you're going to not want to miss any real, any of our episodes. They're, they're good. I I'm not patting myself on the back, but I can tell you that we're here to help you. And so the last thing I want to say, Casey, and then you can say your goodbyes in this episode is, uh, shoot me an email or Casey, whoever's email you have and ask to be part of the private Facebook group where nobody on Facebook knows you're in it except you and the other people in our group. And we are, we're able to share some candid stuff about life and ask questions that you may not want to ask out there in the regular Facebook groups or ones where people can see what you're saying or commenting or whatever. So feel free to join that community. Um, if you'd like, and we can add you to that community. All we need is the email that you use for Facebook and we'll, put you in that community and uh, we'll get you started with that. So Great. Casey, you going to take us out? Everybody, thank you. Again, this was about life balance and ongoing discussion that we'll have. Uh, the most important question I think you need to ask is what's important to you? Um, please email me, Casey at leavelawbehind.com. Email Adam at adam at esquireacademy.com. Confidentially, just vent, ask questions, uh, tell us how we can improve, tell us more topics you'd like to see us uh, to talk about. Um, really happy to have you as part of the community. We are creating sure. a movement. This is what right. creating a movement looks like. There's a lot of like-minded people out there that are thinking the same way. You can see we've interviewed them. We're going to interview them. And uh, you know, really want to let you know that you're not alone. 
the struggles that you have. This is what we're talking about highlighting and, and trying to help. And, and we really, really uh, thank you and are happy that you're along uh, in this journey with us. For sure. And if you have any friends that are attorneys that might benefit from this, please share this podcast with them. And if you do us both a favor and uh, give us a review on iTunes, yeah. uh, whatever, whatever it is, we, are, we want you to uh, voice your opinion and um, give us a, a review on there so that we can get this message out to as many people as we can because there's a lot of pain in the profession. And we're both on a mission to support uh, our profession in general so that there's a lot less pain in the world. That's right. right? That's All right. So thank you so much. We'll see you in the next episode and uh, signing out. Thank you, Casey. We appreciate you being here too. And uh, join us for this very powerful episode coming up next. Take Thanks, care, everybody. Everyone. Bye.